very much, guys. DeFisher definitely wants to be on the analyst desk, it seems. <laughs> um, look, there's a lot to talk about. I want to kick this off. First of all, OMG looked much better in this game than they did in game one of the day against LMQ. Nobody can deny that. I have no idea what Go Going was doing to give up that first blood. That was questionable. Let's talk about what happened after that. The lane swaps, the picks and bans. It was a weird early game in my mind uh, from OMG's side. Yeah, so OMG ended up like early picking uh, the Kale and the Tristana, but... So the bot lane they ended up with was too weak against Nami Kog, which forced them to swap away from it, right? But at the same time, they picked Kale, who I imagine they want to have to beat Rumble in the top lane 1v1. Kale could even transition to become uh, a force to deal with Yasuo as a split pusher later, but they were forced into lane swap. Rumble doesn't care if you lane swap. Sure, his jungle is horrible, but at level 6, his ulti is just so good still. Kale needs farm. So I'm a little confused that OMG decided to like swap away their, their one strong point and just let let, uh, let Samson Blue take the early game. Additionally, they gave up the first dragon for free. Dada just sat in lane on top lane, just watching uh, watching his 80 carry farm. I feel we were the casters were stressing how Dada and Kale and should have never went bottom. I think if they went bottom really early, they could have challenged that push and just let Sam just farm on his own on top, or at least like dealt with the dragon. But they completely lost control of the early game. Yeah, and after that, around the 10 minute mark was when uh, we saw Spirit really focus the Kale. Once she blew Flash, obviously, that you want to get, uh, all his time was done either protecting Rumble or killing Kale. And there was a point where we ended up having both Kale and Rumble in the top side of the map. And we saw Spirit right at that time, he hit his Sightstone buy. So he went into the entire red jungle, littered the war, the side with wars. He used all of his Sightstone charges. And he knew that uh, OMG was there before in his side. So that side was completely littered. And that's when we saw OMG go for that five man play on bot lane, but that happened because Samsung Blue did not wait enough time. They went in to clear a pink ward, but the pink ward was cleared before Kale would even show up in the top lane. There was a huge wave building up top, and if they waited five seconds, the wave would have hit the turret. Kale would have had to show up top. There would have been no TP. There would have been no chance of OMG making a comeback, and that game would have ended 10 minutes earlier. Yeah, and I think it just shows a really big flaw in Samsung Blue's early game strategy. I mean, we have a replay of what happened, and if we can pull it up, it'd be nice. Um, it's so important. It, I can't stress this enough. One of the most fundamental rules of League of Legends is when you're getting something, like Crumb said, they're getting topside control. They're getting an advantage. Do not make aggressive plays on the other side of the map because you don't have the resources to make that play safe. So if you could roll the replay right now, Def just goes over aggressive. I mean, Hart is just essentially following up on what Deft is doing. He's just smacking the Thresh. But Deft is really over chasing this. He shouldn't be doing this because you can see Spirit is controlling the top side of the jungle. And they just get four man collapse on when it's obviously not safe. It's just such a, I guess, cocky, almost arrogant play to do this. You, you ba you're basically saying, I don't care that we don't have resources down here. I think I'm going to outplay you. I'm like a proud father at the moment. Analysts calling up their own replays, probably. The, also, the weird thing is they actually had a ward on the bot line of mid, and they could see Kha'Zix and Ari hovering the bot side. So it seems like you could tip off your bot lane and be like, Ari looks like she wants to roam by. You guys should be careful. Because it seems like they almost gave away what they wanted to do to that. Yeah, so the game did end up accelerating a little bit from this point. Samsung Blue, for the first, let's say, 15 to 20 minutes of the game, held marginally ahead of OMG. And then it just started to skyrocket. They had some very good team fights. They just really grabbed control. And OMG seemed to flounder a little bit. What was it about that mid to late game that cost OMG? So I think OMG did well in recovering by doing these five-man plays, but then when you look at the macro level game Blue is playing, their side wave control is so good. It's something you don't pay attention to, but you should watch that. Whenever any of the Samsung teams go for an objective of a fight, watch where the minions are on the side lane. Every time they went for a fight this game, either Yasuo pushes out one side, their top side is either equal or pushing as well, then they group up, and that's why you see Aker and sometimes like, why are you shooting your Rumble ulti so early? It's because he knows he has this window of time where both side lanes are pushing. He wants to make a play. If it hits, it works. We go. If it doesn't, we'll go back to our side lane, push them out again. And I even think we have another replay of that. I want to make you proud there, Quitch Hunt, so I'll pull it out <laughs> myself. And uh, that's basically, look at the sideways right now. The bottom wave was pushed. Kale was trying to deal with that. She ran bottom to push that out. Top's pushing already. They already used Rumble ulti. It's on cooldown. But because they know they're a four against five in mid, they're going for a dive. They know I have a vision control as well. And just... Pay attention to Spirit. Roll the clip. He knows he's flanking. I think he's going to connect the Q first. And then he's patient. He doesn't kick immediately. Ward dashes. And then that kick into Yasuo ulti. It's just so good. He doesn't He doesn't panic. 
Nami Wave follows up, of course. That's just the, these layered engages that the blue, si blue team comp has into a beautiful dive. I think the biggest thing that I want to point out, you mentioned the side wave control. Now, I think a lot of teams actually have that side wave control kind of down, but the, the thing that separates the Samsung teams is that they're able to be very decisive and really quick. Like, they push the waves and immediately they make a play. Other teams in no the hesitation. tournament yeah. just don't make a play. Like, they push the waves and then they stall out so long that the waves already go back. But Samsung's so quick on it every time. Acar's run bolt, is, they just get fired up every time. Like, oh, he's too early. But I mean, he's just fishing and he knows that if it lands, his team will fall up. And if not, they're smart enough to adapt, whether it's worth flashing in or not. And just, I really love what Spirit did here. It connects on Kha'Zix, doesn't kick him. War dashes behind and then just goes for a, a double Yasuo kick that barely ends up connecting. And it's just so good. Probably we have not heard from you about this game at all. What was your takeaway? I know you were watching the mid lane quite uh, closely on the, one of the side PCs. How do you look at that matchup and, and you know how Daide handled his Yasuo? Well, it's a really interesting matchup because it can really go either way. It's kind of the more skilled player wins that. It's a skill matchup, but... It's a really skill matchup. And the really interesting thing about this was Dade made it a farm lane, but it wasn't like you'd normally see. In games, like in solo queue even, when it's a farm lane, you know it. You can tell the opponent starts passively farming, their max range stuff. Dade didn't do any of that, but that was his plan. He was dashing in and out of minions, but he was staying at max range, so he was still CSing passively, but he was moving aggressively. So this made Cool back off a lot, and he wasn't using his mana to shove the wave. So it actually turned this passive like, lane into something that Cool never really dealt with. And I was watching it, kind of playing it in my head. And the whole time watching it, I was like, I have no clue what I'll do against this. Because I couldn't understand anything Dade was doing. But he was literally just making the lane go longer without giving it away that he was just farming. Well, it definitely seemed to work in their favor. I think this is going to open up a few questions regarding OMG. They stepped up their game from the first match of the day. And I think the most interesting question in my mind is, from what we've seen OMG, I, I use this term loosely, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, what will Fnatic be able to do against Samsung Blue in the same time frame? Uh, but anyways, back to the game, Doublelift. Oh, well, I, back to your question. Like, What will Fnatic do to Samsung Blue? I think... Fnatic has a really good opportunity. You saw that um, Samsung Blue, they don't, they're don't they not patient enough to let somebody make the play. Sometimes, you know, especially their bottom lane, will get overzealous and randomly put themselves in a bad situation. And if you get Reckless Snowballed, I think he'll do a lot more than San did that game, to be quite honest. Well, we will get to see that later in the tournament. For now, we need to take a look at how you, you guys at home are enjoying the World Championship. Earlier today, we asked you, how do you Worlds? And here are some of the photos that you guys sent in. So first one's from at Josh and TT. Uh, shows us how they world the German way, of course, with plenty of beer, pretzels, and bratwurst. That's an awesome way to spend the day. Uh, next one from at Max Vicey shows us the best way to world at school in your socks. Of course, that's a little weird, guys. Uh, next up, we've got D Crumbs showing us. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. Here I am. How are the, how are the pro players? Actually, you know what? This is how the pro players cutie. bail on their top laner. This is basically the analyst desk team. Uh, guys, those were some fantastic. Thank you very much. We would love to see more. Send your photos of how you are worldsing to at Alabal Esports. Use that hashtag worlds, and we might show some of the best ones on the air later. We're going to step away for a moment, and then it's a clash. The LCS Titans. This Cloud9 will be taking on Alliance. It's North America versus Europe once more. Sneaky, Lemon, Jack. That's Cloud9, of course, getting themselves ready. The man of the moment, Froggen. This is his team, do or die. We'll be right back. Sam jumps in towards his intervention on towards Dada. That will save his life as they jump towards her. The Zonia's out, that's comes out, go, go into his back on towards him. And they got oh. him on The wave catches on towards Sam. The intervention isn't enough to save his life. The rocket jump away, but he will get burned down. There's Whoa. the wave. 